We stand here to stop the violence of deportation. We stand here for nonviolence in a violent world. Stand up, fight back. Stand up, fight back. Stand up, fight back. Well, this is my practice video. We're going to do this for 10 seconds and see what happens. This is the messy room where I'm working, and that's about all you're going to see of it. 10 seconds. If you want to make her something fun. Obama is going to do something. The Obama is going to like stop deporting people. You know, Martin Luther King, he taught us to dream about something called the beloved community. And in my tradition, that is a community in which all are welcome, in which there are no more barriers to living fully humanly with one another and, with, and in creation. And so we are here today to break down those barriers, to break down every dividing wall of hostility, to break down every border wall, every wall of prejudice. Those of us, and I look around this crowd, and there aren't many of us who are growing up in the 40s and 50s and 60s, but those of us who were uh, can attest to how incredibly horrible segregation was and how entrenched it was. It was written into the laws of many, many different states. Uh, and yet, starting in the 50s and then culminating in the 60s, Segregation was eradicated. The time for the civil rights movement had come in the 50s and the 60s, and the time for the immigration movement is happening right now. And I'm excited about President Barack Obama having another four years, but one of the things that I really want to be proud about is when there's justice for all people, and no matter Black or white, I, he's a black man, he's an African American, but I didn't vote for him because he was black. But I vote for him that he would fight for the rights of immigrants to have a right in this country like any other human being. Yes, we should celebrate. We should celebrate that he made it, but we should hold him to task. We should stand up and we should fight that all human beings are treated equal.
the street, I can't help but think to myself, what people are passing me? What if they're judging me? As I'm walking, I'm wondering, what are some of these things that people are thinking of me? Like, what type of stereotypes and assumptions are they making about me? I'm pretty young. I'm only 16. Because of my appearance of a teenager, mostly adults must assume that I'm disrespectful and don't know any manners. What about that boy over there? He looks like he's about my age. With my current generation's mindset, you would probably think that I'm an overachiever or maybe even a nerd. With my book bag full of that stuff to the brim and my glasses, that's something he might be thinking. The stereotype that I loathe the most is that I might be undereducated. Some people will talk to me in a condescending tone. Could because of my race or even my age. I can't help how these assumptions Every morning, even though it's a weekend, my, my alarm clock always seems to go off. This is the first thing I always see when I wake up. This is my room. Kind of messy, but it's something. You know, I usually wake up, chill for a little bit, like make sure my whole body wakes up, and then... I'll go eat something. I also like to look out my window in the mornings. See how the day's going. It's pretty good weather today. This is the place I was born. Well, born and raised. I used to come here like every day after school when I was younger. I actually lived here for about half a year from my sophomore year in high school. There's a lot of history back here. We used to play basketball right there in the courts. What you see right here is my, my favorite place in the world. I shared some of my greatest memories out here having my best times out here. We used to play kickball over here. That's the home plate. First base is somewhere over there. The pole is second base. Third base was this porch that I'm standing on right now. And then we just run back home. We have cookouts over here. That's the grill. Garden that my grandmother used to... My, not my grandmother. I apologize. My great aunt used to you know, grow stuff and until she, you know, well, it was well before she passed away, but now we have a gardener there doing all this stuff. It's also quite fun to be back here because of the fact that, you know, it's, it's really mellow back here. It's like one of the quietest, quietest spots in town, I say. Like, I could just sit here, look at the trees, there's a bunch of squirrels that run by. I could always just concentrate back here. I suppose I write raps back here or just like chill back here to um, pass the time. I feel like my neighborhood just has been going through some crazy things. Lots of shootings. I heard about the 30th homicide lately and we had just had a week, I mean we just had a Sunday pass that it was like five homicides, like five shootings in one day. Oh, my way to school. <laughs> I'm going to the bus stop now. This is my cousin. <laughs> you doing this again, Asada? Yeah, I had to. 
Okay, so we're waiting for the bus stop. For the bus. Ready for the bus, Kingman. <laughs> it's just uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah. I feel mad pressure. I don't know if I'm my head and she did it. Can I ask you guys a couple of questions? Uh, you can ask. Oh, stick <laughs> Would you ask me? Okay, so have you been directly affected by gun violence in New Haven? Have you had somebody? Do we have to talk about this? That's yes. real personal, yes. Can you point over here? No, no, yes. I'm not done yet. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Can you talk more about it? Just no. go. My cousin mm -hmm. was shot and killed. Okay, go to her. Mimi, have you been directly affected by gun violence? Let in me Haiti? think. <laughs> yes. By somebody that I know. Yeah, like somebody that, that you know. Yes. This guy got killed right in front of my street. He like died on my lawn. My little cat. I guess she wants to get in the house. And uh, this is my house. I'm from New Haven, so a lot of things you hear around here is this kid got shot, this kid got stabbed, this kid's in jewelry, or this kid's in prison. When I reflect back to my teenage years, that's all I have. My friends or people I hang out with, they're too young to be going th um, through this. And they're being exposed to a lot at such a very young age. And I don't think anybody should go through this. My biggest fear related to gun violence would be getting shot because I don't want to go down as the person that got shot because of some beef or because I looked at somebody wrong or because some, I stepped on somebody's shoes. I seen my cousin, he was holding his stomach and there was a lot of blood running out and he was like walking by out because everybody ran and then he was walking out alone and you know, he, he looked at hell. He, really could walk and um so I you know I ran to him and grabbed him and then like I he was he couldn't even say a word. He couldn't say anything. So he was just holding his stomach and blood was coming out of his mouth. And like uh it, it was a very uh, uh man, that that one was a really, really hurtful uh, experience. I I I, I didn't, I didn't even know how to react. I just screamed for help. And, uh, later the am ambulance came, but uh, he died on the way there. Um, but, yeah, it, um, you know, to hold him in my arms and see him, like, you know, die by each second of the pain and all the blood getting on me and, you know, just seeing my family, like gun violence, period. It's just, it, it, it just saddens me. And, like, I don't know. Guns are popular in the communities because um, people think that guns solve the problem. They think that if they kill the person, their problems go away. And that's not true. It actually makes the problem worse.
People would say pick up a gun because they're afraid, because they want respect, because they feel like, all right, I got a gun, let's go. So we're learning about masks. My mask probably would be that nothing bothers me. When inside, stuff kind of really does because I may appear as the person that is just, okay, whatever, I don't care. But I really have feelings. Stuff really affects me to the point where I kind of am like deeply affected. And it's kind of like people are just like, oh, why can't it be like you nonchalant? I'm really, and it's kind of like they really think that the only emotion that I show is anger. I show anguish, I show happiness, I show surprise, I show a lot of different emotions. I'm like an animated cartoon character. And the fact that people feel that I'm emotionless kind of hurts because I do have emotions. Masks are very important because those are the things that we put over our face to be other than who we are. So we talked a lot about anger and we talked about rage. That's a mask that's put on to defend ourselves. I guess anger is something that builds up inside of you, an emotion that you get when you're so mad. It's hard to describe. It's when you're so upset with something and you want to do something about it. Most of the time it resorts in in violence all the time. What is your favorite memory ever from childhood? Um, my favorite memory from my childhood would likely have to be when I was five years old. It was um, my fifth birthday party in the back of my house. My family came over. Um, I was in kindergarten, so I really didn't make too many friends shy. Uh, I had an orange bounce house, and I had on jean shorts and a random orange shirt with Tigger slippers. Personally, me, am I angry? Um, I bottle up a lot of things, so there's a lot to be angry about. For example, um, over the weekend, a situation happened where my father wouldn't let me stay over a close friend's house. And um, I, I did take it a bit over extreme, and... Um, I got mad really quick, and for some reason, everything, just everything, from my parents' divorce to all the arguments I'd get into with either of them just brought back so many memories, and it really just got me mad and angry, and um, I began to flip out, and I got into an argument with my stepmother, and it was just a mess, and um... I think that's, it shows a lot for people around my age who are mad, and just older people or anybody who's angry. Um, a lot of people have a tendency of bottling up their issues, and um, it just shows that like any little problem or issue, somebody can just explode and just release all this stress and everything else, and um, you know, it. I think it's the worst way of trying to keep yourself, you know, just content of bottling still things up. I think when there's a problem, you need to talk to somebody because, um, you know, you can end up like my situation, just saying things that you don't mean and just blowing up and taking things from every single issue you've been through and just throwing it at somebody or throwing it at yourself and blaming yourself. And it's just honestly the worst feeling. It's an emotion, a feeling that you have, and usually it's caused by a reaction or another cause or something that's happening uh, around you. Um, I have to say it's a very powerful emotion because it's the most common and the strongest emotion. My radio is uh, like 
my prized possession. It's like the only thing that keeps me busy when I really have nothing to do. When I can just listen to music. Uh, you know, that's my grandmother's birthday uh, present because tomorrow she's turning 93. And uh, that really excites me, and I'm proud of her. I don't think it's the best time to live in because of the economy and all this violence, all this gun violence in New Haven and stuff. Um, it's not the safest time and it's really, really bad that, you know, some people have to worry about their children or their children have to worry about how long they're going to live. Sometimes, you know, people, you know, don't choose to say words when they release everything, they pick up objects, they throw tantrums, they knock things over, you know, for for example, you know, all the shootings that we've had, people pick up guns, and um, they just do things that other people who are so innocent, but they're just so angry, though, they, all they see is red, you know, and um, it's really sad that people choose to um, show their anger that way, but you know, for my part, it's how we grew up. It's the way that you were raised to talk to people or to bottle things up, and that's how it is. My, I guess mom would be is to get out in the community with the youth and see the things that they are going through mm -hmm. and stop throwing the kids under the bus, telling them that they're no good before they go out the house in the morning. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If they go out the house in the morning and you scream at them, or if they see or when you see in the street, you know, old people they cover their stuff up and they look at you like you're a certain type of way, because you look a certain type of way, then you know it will stop leading the youth into think doing things that you know they they. You know. Again, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, unwanted touching, you know, taking off clothes in the bakery, the kids having to work when they were 13 and 14, you know, small kids that had just come over the border and were sort of thin, having to carry heavy pounds, you know, 50 pound sacks of flour, working heavy machinery, going into the freezer and freezing, absolutely not paid for their work. And I think all they said was, you know, this man did not pay us, and he has created a thriving business. He has various assets. He's able to pay a very good defense lawyer. And, you know, this is just unjust. 